What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new tactics video and today we have finally got Pep's 2010 Barcelona as requested for quite some time now. If you do enjoy the tactics on this channel be sure to leave a like, drop a little subscription and hit that notification bell so you never miss another upload. So we're going to kick things off then with Barcelona and you know what? We actually had a really good season. As you can see right now we were successful by winning the Spanish First Division. We won the UEFA Champions League as well alongside of the Spanish Cup and also the Spanish Super Cup making it a quadruple winning season. In terms of the actual Spanish First Division we come out and we won 33 games, drew four and lost just the one game. Picking up 122 goal difference and 103 points in the league with Robert, Robert, Robert Lewandowski coming in with 56 goals an 8.17 average match rating and 16 assists being the top with Pedri. In terms of the Champions League, we actually won the semi-finals right now. You can see here, well, that's the board expectation, should I say, sorry. We won the final, nearly got a bit confused there, against Real Madrid in a 3-1 win. Lewandowski scoring 18, obviously across the entire Champions League stage, and also getting the highest average rating as well. And a very similar story as well in the Spanish Cup. On this occasion, Rafinha, to be fair to him, I know my face cam will be blocking it, so I will make sure I tell you this one. Rafinha actually picks up three goals, ranking him the highest goal scorer in this cup now. So realistically, it's Lewandowski carrying majority of the load, but still a really good performance from everybody in the team. Going over to the data hub right now, we are going to be looking at 3.58 goals per game, a conceded at 0.37, over 23 shots a game, and a pass completion of 88.26. So some really good data hub stats there. And talking of stats, going over the league stats, we actually dominated these as well. Most points per game at 2.71, most goals at 136, most shots were at 886, Fewer shots coming in at 197. The possession's kind of tight though. Joint rank one with Atletico, uh, Atletico Madrid. As we can see here, 61, 61 and 61. Spanish league is well known for possession heavy football. So realistically, it's quite an honor to be up there. And to be fair, in this division, over 60% is a real good statement for a possession-based tactic. In terms of the most clean sheets, we win that with 28, one more than Real Madrid, and the fewest conceded, obviously we conceded three less goals than Real Madrid, meaning we rank one in that too. We then go over to Germany with FC Bayern and we win the Bundesliga, we win the Champions League, we also win the German Super Cup and come runners up in the DFP Pockel. So nearly again a quadruple winning season and unfortunately for some reason it's not showing here in the competition screen so we are going to make sure we watch the highlights for that one just so you know I'm not lying to you guys but overall a very good season over here in Germany as well. A very convincing season over the likes of Leipzig, Köln and Mainz, Dortmund down in sixth place of course we are on a new database so no Jude Bellingham is this what Dortmund are going to be like now I personally don't think it's going to be this bad but the game obviously thinks otherwise in terms of goal scorers it's going to be Nabry with 23 goals Leon Goretzka with a 7.55 highest match rating on average and Joshua Kimmich coming in with 12 assists in terms of the pocket it's going to be Tillman coming in with seven goals ranking him the highest scorer and Kingsley Coman ranking one in the highest match rating and also the most assists in terms of the German Super Cup we did win it obviously it is going to be Nabry and Musiala Dolet all joined on the one goal. Obviously, it is going to be a very short competition, hence why not many goals have been scored. But still a very good season, obviously, over in Germany and one that I think we can be proud of. And in terms of the league stats, we actually had a really good show in here as well. I mean, most points per game at 2.76. Most goals here at bang on 100, nearly 40 compared to RB Leipzig, 40 more that is. Most shots four at 743. Fewer shots coming in at 166. Most possession coming in at 61, which is, you know, four more percent than Wolfsburg who find themselves in second place. Fair play to them. Fewer conceded coming in at 12, which is a lot of difference compared to mine. So we are really defensively solid, but also because we have possession, we don't let the team have the ball, the other team have the ball. So they don't have a chance to score goals, which is what you want to be doing in football matches, really. And in terms of the clean sheets, again, very, very dominant. 23 for us and mine's coming in with 16. So quite a big difference there of seven. In terms of the data hub, we are going to be looking at 2.94 goals per game, conceded at 0.35. Shots per game at 21.85 and a pass completion of 89.10. As you can see, we score a high number of goals compared to the average in 90 minutes and also wins a relatively average ratio of tackles. So it's not going to be incredible for that side of things, but you're not going to be rash. You're not going to be getting too many players sent off. We win a lot of the tackles we're putting in, which obviously is something that you want to be seeing. And then lastly, we finish off with his current team. That is going to be Manchester City, where we win the Premier League. We also win the UEFA Super Cup. 
Carabao Cup and also the English Community Sealed Shield making it again a quadruple winning season as you can see right now the Premier League title was actually quite easy for us a 10 point advantage over Chelsea which is quite interesting to see Manchester United in third place and Tottenham obviously missing out there as Arsenal finish off the Champions League spot with 79 points Liverpool all the way down in seventh place in terms of the actual goal scorers, though, we've got Erling Haaland with 55 goals, who also gets the highest match rating. And Kevin De Bruyne comes in with 23 assists. In the Champions League, it's a good display, but obviously not as good in real life. As we get all the way to the semi-finals, where unfortunately we do get knocked out by Real Madrid. In that competition, though, Erling Haaland's still obviously going to be the top goal scorer. We won the Super Cup here, which obviously isn't the biggest competition alongside of the Community Shield, but they still are trophies. We win both of them. And the Carabao Cup, we actually win as well with Erling Haaland with six goals, ranking him the top goal scorer for Manchester City. So really a good season. The stats don't lie either when it comes to the league, as we are going to have most points per game at 2.47, most goals at 127, most shots at 829, fewer shots against at 239, Possession, we actually missed out on the rank one slot, which does surprise me, but I'm very careful when I make possession tactics because realistically, I could release a possession tactic that has 74% possession, but it might not score enough goals. It might not defend very well. And it's all about finding that balance because obviously a lot of you guys do download the tactics and just plug and play, which I wouldn't always recommend because you have to see if your players can even play that sort of style. But I have to get a perfect mixture. So to be honest, 59% I will take. Most clean sheets coming in at 20, obviously one more than Chelsea. And the fewest conceded, we actually were a little bit behind Chelsea, but still coming in with a very close second place finish. Going over to the data hub, this is by far the most amount of goals we have scored. 3.34 goals per game, conceded at 0.76, so still way under a goal a game in the toughest division on earth. Shots per game at 21.82, a pass completion of 87.5, and a tackle win ratio of 76 0.79 again showing that we perform above the average based off the stats and we score a higher number of goals compared to the average so let's get into some of the games then this is going to be a 3-0 win over Real Madrid obviously away as well and you are going to see exactly how these goals sort of come about it is going to be Dembele goes a little bit more direct on this time here into Ansu Fati who tucks it in to the left hand corner and that's one thing which this 4-3-3 does very well it can play that short elegant sort of pass and style but there's also that mixture of aggressive play and if we need to more direct play there as that I wouldn't describe as a good goal actually as the deflection completely changes the direction of the ball but the way we won the ball back and obviously found that man in the space was really really impressive as we are going to put pressure on Carvajal here it is going to be him going back to the keeper Courtois in no man's land the match engines an absolute shambles and then over to this Champions League final with Bayern Munich which I had to include just for you guys to see as we actually do go 1-0 up here with a bit, a bit more of a direct approach to be honest. Mane somehow wins the header and Nabry does tuck it in. Unfortunately for us, Manchester City do end up scoring which is pretty likely to happen when you play a team like Man City. A great bit of play there through to Julian Alvarez and to be honest again I feel like it's easily preventable. The keeper and centre-back come together and easy prevent a goal but luckily for us and well planned from us. We go to the attack and variant, and it is going to be Tillman who finishes it off with Delit down the right hand side. A great run from Mane, who's going to cut it back in the box into Tillman and gets the winner. Then I thought we'd just watch a game of loads of goals, and that is going to be a 9 0 win against Burnley at home with Manchester City. Always oh, going to be an easy game as we drive it through the right hand side into the middle. It could have been prevented, to be fair, but somehow it finds it way. It, finds, it just goes through practically everyone. Erling's Haaland's sheer power of his shot, as it is now going to be Foden on the left hand side, driving past everyone. He's going to go solo, and to be honest, that is just really bad defending from Burnley. That needs to be stopped. Foden literally picks it up and just cuts in and does what he wants with no one stopping him. As it is now going to be Silver out wide. He's going to cut in as well. Are they going to allow him to shoot? He plays it back in. It's a little bit scrappy again. I feel like Burnley are quite an unfortunate situation here. I mean, 3-0 down in nine minutes. And if they were a little bit better at defending, these could have been prevented. But Bernardo Silva beats Taylor on the right-hand side. Is he going to go alone? He's going to square it back in the middle. And I want to say right now, again, the rebound's lucky. But this tactic is so good at going forwards. We cut back here and realistically, we have got Foden. Obviously, he was the initiator. We've also got Herrera. We've got Haaland. We've got De Bruyne. And if things don't go to plan and it goes onto the edge, we've got one, two, three players here all waiting 
obviously either have a crack at goal or keep the ball, keep that link up play going. And that's something which this tactic does so, so well. And it's not even really meant to be a counter-attacking tactic, but the way the player roles work together, it really does work. Ake down the left-hand side now, he's going to win it back from Zorori. Is he going to cut it inside? He is into Erling Haaland. And that is the beauty with Haaland, you know. You can feed the ball to his feet or you can get the ball in the air. And that's obviously something which Man City were lacking for a while. De Bruyne now over to Phil Foden. Absolutely acres of space on the left-hand side. Back into Herrera, into Haaland. And you're not going to get a tactic that transitions that well from wide areas to the centre. As good as this one does because it is absolutely incredible at doing that. Laporte now having that license to roam. I do allow that in this system. Inside into Herrera. And again, a very easy goal. Simple. Centre-back picks it up. Has the ability to drive creates the chance by himself and again if you don't have these player roles on you are going to miss out on a lot of this as that is going to be a incredible ball into the box from de bruyne and an even better header from ruben diaz as we link up the play now through midfield into alvarez and you are seeing this now great tiki taka great touch and a great finish if that's not pep tiki taka i don't know what is a sensational goal and we are now going to go ahead and break down this tactic but if you guys are enjoying today's video Please do leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And also leave a comment right now on any other tactics you want to see or teams you wish to see me give a rebuild. Let me know in the comments. So as always, guys, there are going to be three variants of Pets Barca 2010. I want to thank all of the names coming down the screen right now. These are either going to be new or existing Patreon members. Patreon is a great way to support me as a creator. And also you get some fantastic perks back to you as well, including access to Three of the tactic files in one simple download. You get early tactic and video release, one-on-one -on -one tactical help and priority in your rebuild and tactic requests. And if that's not enough, you also get enrolled into Patreon exclusive giveaways, which is going to include a couple of copies of FM24 and in the future, some match tickets on football shirts. So definitely go over and check that out. But let's go ahead and look at this tactic. So we're going to kick things off then with the mentality is going to be set to positive, in possession, we're going to have fairly wide. We're going to have focus play down the left and the right because this way you are going to get them wide players actually involved. And we still saw how useful the midfield players actually performed. I did try and focus play through the middle, but then the wide areas got neglected. They were essentially useless, just not doing anything. So having it like this really does work well. While playing out from the back, obviously play out of defense is a key part of this system to get it to work really, really well as well. Passing directness, you want that set to shorter or much shorter to be exact, a higher tempo and also mixed crosses. Now, traditionally, I'm going to be honest, Pep, might, Pep probably didn't play a maxed out higher tempo. But as I mentioned before in the videos, I have to make sure I release tactics that perform well in the game because you guys download these and you want them to work instantly. So I have to sometimes sacrifice a little bit of realism to get the results in the game. So if you do want to match Pep completely, I would recommend toning this down by at least one. In transition, we're going to have counter press and counter while taking short goal kicks. Nothing to where we're going to distribute to. We leave that simply blank. Out of possession, we've got the standard defensive line, the high press and line of engagement more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Now, going over to the player roles, we are going to start off with a sweeper keeper on support, a fullback on attack, pass it shorter and close down more, a ball playing defender on defend on tackle harder. This is by far the most restricted centre back as this one here is again a ball playing defender on defend with tackle harder, but also dribble more. That is going to be where we saw that chance get created, where he essentially had the ball picked up and pretty much got into this area here and played the through ball through and obviously put it past Murich. So it's a great option to have on your centre backs. And a wing back on the left on support, pass it shorter and close down more. And that is going to give you a very different back line. Everyone's a little bit different, but they work really, really well together. A DM in the middle on defend, on pass it shorter and tackle harder. A center mid on support, on dribble less and tackle harder. And a Metzala on attack on the default instructions because he does exactly what I want him to do. On the left hand side, we've got an inside forward on attack, on pass it shorter and tip narrower. And on the right, we've got an inverted winger on attack on pass at shorter and sit narrower. So essentially, as you can imagine from both players here, they pretty much sit in these pockets of space here, which means that they're going to link up with the midfield really well. And it gives room for the fullbacks to make those runs forward as well. Finish it off the advanced forward on attack, pass at shorter 
and shoot more often. And that is going to be the default version broken down. For to the attack and variant, obviously we did utilize this in that Champions League final, and that is going to be still on positive. We've got fairly wide overlap left, overlap right, focus play down the right and the left. So this is exactly the same, but actually now we're telling the fullbacks to actually go out and make sure they're overlapping, overlapping runs and causing all sorts of issues in those wide areas. Much shorter, a higher tempo. And on this occasion, because we are looking for a goal, be more expressive is going to be a ticked option. And I didn't talk about this previously, but obviously we favoured mixed crosses because in that City team especially, Haaland can obviously receive balls with his feet or he can obviously head the ball in as well. So if you've got a really tiny striker, just have it low. If you've got an absolute giant, possibly that is a lot better at heading than naturally finishing with his feet, go for the sort of floated ones. But the ideal is probably mixed. And in transition, we've got counter press, counter, distribute quickly and take short goal kicks. Obviously, this changes here because we are in a bit of a rush to get the game moving. And out of possession, we've got the higher defensive line, the high pressing line of engagement more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Over to the player roles for the attack and variant. As you can see right now, there are going to be a few changes. Not too many, though. Um, these three remain exactly the same, so I'm not even going to waste your time on those. This wingback does obviously go to an attack and duty, still on the same instructions. Obviously, that means both fullbacks are now on attack. We opt for a deep line playmaker in the middle, on support, on close down more and tackle harder. The Metzala remains exactly the same on the left. And on the right, we have a central midfielder, but on attack, on dribble less, roam from position, move into channels, and tackle harder essentially a really aggressive short pass minded midfield player that is also going to be more up here to link up these front three who obviously do remain on the same instructions over to the defensive variant now and the mentality does drop to balanced in possession we've got standard focus play down the left and the right still playing out from the back we've now opted for a style of more time wasting tiki taka if that makes sense um with a slightly lower tempo obviously not as aggressive winning the ball back anymore time wasting maxed out to frequently dribble less and also be more disciplined this is really a tactic you use to seal out the last 10 minutes of a game if you are really struggling to avoid conceding that equalizer or even the losing goal in transition we have got counter press still on counter slowing the pace down because obviously we want to get the full-time whistle quicker so hold on to the ball tactical it's all, it's all mind games guys it is all mind games and out of possession we've actually gone very on pep like but again i've got to consider you guys that are going to be using these as plug and plays standard and mid block this is a very defensive 433 now and one which i would really advise and this is why i hope people do watch this part of the video um don't go into a game like this only switch to this in the last five to ten minutes because it is very defensive but it will get you over the edge and more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution and in terms of the player roles, there are going to be a few changes now. So, wing backs, we're going to have a full back on defend, still on pass at shorter and close down more. We're going to have a wing back on the left on defend, pass at shorter and close down more. In terms of the centre backs, they do remain the same apart from the left one. We get rid of, obviously, we pretty much take his expressive mentality away. We don't let him go further forward, so we restrict him to tackle harder alongside of the right hand sided one. We then have a DM on defend, on pass at shorter tackle harder and a deep line playmaker on support on pass at shorter dribble less and tackle harder if you are really trying to shut up shop you could even have two dms here and then we have a central midfielder on support just ahead of them on support on roam from position move into channels tackle harder on the left we have got a supportive inside forward on the same instructions on the right a supportive inverted winger on the same instructions and up top we have got exactly the same advance forward on attack pass it shorter and shoot more often and that is going to give you three very very good pep sparse 2010 inspired tactics if you guys have enjoyed today's video please do consider leaving it a like dropping a subscription on the channel and while you're there please do hit the notification bell because you're never going to miss another upload and we have got some top videos on the way enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one